In Ecuador, the party of slain presidential candidate Fernando Villavicencio has nominated his running mate, environmental activist Andrea Gonzalez, to run for president. Villavicencio was gunned down as he left a campaign event last Wednesday. His campaign focused on corruption and gangs and was one of only a few candidates to allege links between organized crime and government officials in Ecuador. I am now joined by Pascal Drouot. He's a Latin American specialist from the Schwazel Institute. Mr. Drouot, thanks for joining us. So let's Welcome. start. What is your take on the current political situation in Ecuador? Well, in fact, a few days before the first round of the presidential election, this assassination puts in check the security situation in Ecuador, but much more than that. I mean, the role of Ecuador in the narco-traffic, international narco-traffic. And this is this unknown face uh, that this uh, assassination showed on the stage. Ecuador became a country uh, with uh, those uh, uh, groups and uh, narco groups of uh, uh, distribution of the cocaine in many different countries and of course in Latin America before uh, the distribution in Europe through Africa or of course North America. Only to understand the scale of the problem, 700 tons of cocaine are uh, going to uh, the market through many ports in Ecuador as the sport port of, uh, in Manabi, for example. So that's a huge and a very, very hard uh, situation, but of course, with regional hits in regional, uh, regional coordination with some countries, with Colombia, but also with uh, some cartel groups in Mexico. And also, when we know uh, Ecuador is bordered by uh, Colombia and, uh, and Peru, the, the biggest producers of cocaine, and you're talking about 700 tons of cocaine transiting, how can Ecuador tackle gangs and drug-related violence? Yes, that's uh, the challenge today for Ecuador. Uh, but as we said, the frontier in, with Colombia, with Peru, is that's something very important. 30% of the Colombian production is uh, going transiting to uh, Ecuador. We must understand that in this new uh, schema, Colombia is a country of production of cocaine and one of the main countries in the world that's very known. Uh, Ecuador today is not only a country of transiting, it is also a country where it is a new process of transformation of the drug, of the crystallization. And this process concluding in Ecuador is exported to new uh, 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 lanes of uh, the markets. And of course, we discovered uh, uh, externally that uh, the cartel of Mexico, Sinaloa, Jalisco are very linked with uh, the uh, uh, Ecuador groups. We are talking about two main groups in Ecuador, Los Lobos and Los Choneros. We know that yesterday, for example, the leader of one of these group has been taken in his jail, being transferred. Uh, Fito uh, uh, decided to uh, talk to about the murder of the candidate uh, and Via Vicencio. And he, he has been yesterday transferred with the support of 4,000 policemen. I mean, today, the huge challenge of Ecuador is facing this security situation, but also to fight against infiltration. I mean, today, Ecuador in 2023, let's remain colonial. Thank you very much. Uh, we have to leave it there. Okay. Pascal Drouot uh, from the Schwazel Institute, thank you very much.